Wednesday 20th of March and the time is exactly 10 16 p.m. and I have my largest order of nearly 240 cupcakes that I have to get out for Monday which is um, let's see what the dates are 25th uh, you know what my brain is gone a bit fuzzy but that's quite a lot of cupcakes and even though it's a couple of days away I have to start the prep work way in advance it's a lot of work I've already spent about two hours shopping for the items and tomorrow I'm going to continue shopping for some of the um, items that I need to complete this order I'm also not feeling very well I've come down with a cold and my throat is sore I'm low in energy it's not the best time for such a huge order but it's a corporate client that I love to work with they're amazing so I'm excited to get this order out and I'm happy to bring you along look it's the first time I've started filming I don't know how filming is gonna go but hopefully you can come along and see some of the behind the scenes of um, such a baking busy baking um, week if you like this is going to take up to about five days so it's going to be a lot but i can bring you along you can see snippets so right now we can go to the kitchen and have a look at the mess that is the kitchen right so <laughs> here is a view of my small kitchen that has quite a lot of ingredients stewing on it with lots of stuff going if we zoom back in here there are bits here and then there are things here that I have to organize. So I'm going to set you up on a tripod. And I'm going to start organizing these bits. My, let's say it's 10, 16, but my day has essentially started. Because I'm going to have to organize all of this and then sit down and have an outline of the tasks that I need to complete day by day. And also gauge some quantities of items that I need to get through this session but yeah that's essentially what it's going to be like so um excited to have you and i hope you enjoy this video so about this large cupcake order these were for a return corporate client i've worked with in the past and they were a joy to make cupcakes for their representative is amazing who always comes up with ideas to make their orders easy for me so despite the order being on such a limited time note i was happy to take it on the 240 cupcakes will be made in two batches but i still have my regular pre-booked weekly orders alongside these to organize so i really need to stay on top of things with that in mind i'm going to be making the base liquid for a chocolate cake together with all the decorative elements this will include edible lace and floral decorations i'm not baking the cake tonight but prepping ingredients and the pans ready for the morning the cake is due out on saturday and it's only wednesday night tonight so I'm happy to bake the cake Thursday, leave it to set so the crumb settles and I'll decorate late Friday evening ready for Saturday so it remains fresh. Between the large cupcake order and the chocolate cake, there are other cupcakes too which I have to work alongside. And besides everything else, I've only just done the shopping and I'm now organizing my tasks. The large order hasn't even begun yet. Whilst we're at it, hello and welcome to my cake kitchen. My name is Gladys and over here I make simple informative tutorials tutorials to help you navigate cake decorating easily. There are a ton of tutorials on this channel specially made for you to assist you through your own cake decorating journey. They are packed with tips and in-depth explanations about my processes and the intention behind using them. I really do trust you'll find some value. The kitchen is all tidy now and I'm drying my bowls ready for use in the morning. I must admit though, while filming these videos can be taxing, especially late into the night, it forces me to be a little more organized and I find I am more productive through these stressful situations. By the way, did you notice I did the washing up by hand? Yes, I did and that's simply because I don't have a dishwasher. I have an interesting relationship with dishwashers and I'll tell you all about that later. But for now, I want to know a bit about you. Where are you and do you love cake making? If I didn't make cakes, I'd be a lawyer or a broadcaster or a lecturer. That was long before I came to the UK where I now live. So it's 1.48 a.m. And thankfully I've managed to finish much of what I wanted to do this evening. I'm quite surprised about 
how much I've been able to do. Um, so I started about um, quarter past 10 and I've been able to do all those tasks that are important. I didn't expect to get through that much, but I am also trying to maximize um, time and also make sure that I can utilize the time and energy I have because I don't feel very well. I don't know how I'm going to feel day by day. So my aim is by morning, um, get the chocolate cake done and um, before heading off to Costco. And then we'll be back in the evening again, like we did today. But otherwise, it's a productive evening and um, Day two began with a cup of tea and a lot of hope to get through my tasks and be ready for a Costco trip sometime between 12 and 2 p.m. Back in the kitchen, there was the chocolate cake to make and a batch of Swiss meringue buttercream for which I had to organize the ingredients. The edible cake lace that was left overnight has now set and has to be peeled from the silicone mat. In the meantime, let's talk baking for large orders. I find I work well under pressure, so sometimes I've left my tasks too late until its crisis point. This wasn't the case for this time though because in fact I'd worked myself into having a solid plan so I'm not overwhelmed. To manage feeling overwhelmed in the kitchen, I have long periods of silence in the kitchen where the only sound is my baking activities and then I may switch to a preferred podcast or my favorite gospel playlist on YouTube. My plans for a trip to Costco fell through due to car problems so I decided to go for a walk and to get some fresh air since I've been in the kitchen since 10 a.m. this morning the kitchen after my failed Costco plants so on my work table I have had some deliveries from Amazon over here I have some ribbon I have four of these I think they are about is it 25 meters or 25 yards I don't know I'll check um, normally I wrap my boxes up part of the packaging in ribbon when the cakes are boxed up i'll insert a photo here for you to see what they look like there is a particular one that i love to buy but unfortunately they don't have them available um, on this occasion so i've got these substitute ones they are not my preference i'm quite particular and a creature of habits so there we have it for ribbons over here I'm sure by the end of this video you will see how they will be put to be you could use there's cream of tartar especially if you make Swiss meringue buttercream this is an acid that works to um, break um, egg white proteins they are good for stabilizing the meringue when making swiss meringue buttercream i have a video about that linked up all about swiss meringue buttercream there's the thing about swiss meringue buttercream that i think most beginners and even pros alike get scared of making and i can tell you right now that i started making swiss meringue buttercream as a beginner at a very very early stage of my baking because mouth feel and taste was really important to me i still do not like Italian Miran buttercream even though there are similarities between that and Swiss Miran buttercream simple reason is um, Italian Miran buttercream is made from fresh egg white and I tend to be a little bit queasy about that I've spoken about that in a video that I will also link up here for you however I like Swiss Miran buttercream the thing about Swiss Miran though is that it is just tedious there are so many processes one has to adhere to and um, you miss one step or do something wrong and then you have a problem from making sure your batter um, is great um, consistency wise and temperature and appearance and all of that to making sure there's no oil in any of your utensils that is used in, in the buttercream process so just the tedious mindless tankless tasks of wiping things down with um, vinegar and just ensuring that you get all your processes right to start with the making of the buttercream process is the thing that determines how successful you will be about Swiss meringue buttercream and I'm very passionate about telling you how great Swiss meringue is and how easy it is and I've actually dedicated a few videos to that so I'll encourage you to check that out but that's enough of me and Swiss meringue buttercream there's also color meal a um, few colors that I have picked up over here because the buttercream that I will be using to top the um, large order of cupcakes are supposed to be pastel. I like Progel 
um, and calamine for different reasons. For this, because there's pastel to consider, I find you only need just a little bit of um, calamine, and I also don't like coloring my buttercream a lot. The reason being, it interferes with mouth feel, and if you go um you choose deeper colors then it leaves an aftertaste which i hate so i actually prefer as um cake decorator i prefer topping my um cupcakes with plain buttercream and if the cupcakes are supposed to be themed i would go for fondant disc and that's by preference and choice to guarantee a great mouthfeel of buttercream so nothing really interferes with the integrity of the buttercream on a cupcake Well, that was a lecture no one asked for, but moving on, the day went by very quickly and between chores and family commitments, it's now a little over 10 p.m. and work starts on the chocolate cake. I initially actually thought the chocolate cake was for Saturday, turns out it's for Friday, so I'm well pleased that I had sorted the decorative elements well in advance. My plan is to fill and layer the cake leave the cake to set first whilst i start on some cupcakes which are due on friday too and once the cupcakes are done i'll be back on the cake frosted and complete with decorations for later it's amazing how under pressure i am able to stay organized even with all the washing up i have to do and yes i'm not keen on a dishwasher remember i said i had a funny relationship with dishwashers that's because i have to rinse the items first before loading and i dislike a light load but i hate having to stock up utensils enough to load for cake making though i require almost the same utensils for large batches of baking sessions so the dishwasher won't be very helpful but what do you think is it just me or somebody probably feels like me too well the cupcakes are done here and here's a peak of both for birthdays It is almost 11 p.m. and the cake is getting covered in ganache. The process involves a crumb coat to seal in and hold the crumbs from showing through as this cake is going to be completed as a polished ganache cake. However, the inspiration for the cake is one of my own cakes, which is in a fondant version the customer wanted recreated in non-fondant form. Decorated with edible lace flowers and a selection of Ferrero Rochers, this will be displayed on a fondant covered board and a full tutorial for the fondant version of this cake is linked in the description box for you. I prefer ganache to buttercream simply for stability ganache will support a steady cake while buttercream can be tricky to get the best out of using ganache dough it's best practice to keep tools warm during the decorating process and i have occasionally adapted my ganache recipe from the three to one ratio to four to one when needed Okay, so after two long days of extensive prep work and organizing for a large order of cupcakes, our cake is done and here is a look at what it looks like. I'll be back in part two where we'll head to Costco and the cupcakes will be taking real form. Subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video.